Lisa Hurley, uh, the caregiver coordinator for the Aging and Disability Resource Center. And um, I'm uh, the chair for the task force for Dementia Friendly Sheboygan County. And what we'll do is we will have our committee introduce themselves so that you have an idea of who's been working on this project. I'm Libby Holty, and I'm a public health educator at the Division of Public Health for Sheboygan County Health and Human Services. I'm Doug Holty, uh, yeah, her father-in-law, and uh, <laughs> I work for Project Independence. It's a uh, sub, uh, group under TLC Homes. I work with uh, elderly and uh, with people with dementia. And I'm Ginny Nyheis with the Alzheimer's Association. Committee members? <laughs> um, I'm going back here. Sorry. Um, I'm Lynn Cody and I'm the founder of the Game Board. Hi, I'm Chris Jeske. I signed you all in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dale Gearden. I supervise the aging programs at the Aging Institute of Research Center. Good morning. I'm Marie Sager and I'm the supervisor at the ADRC. Great. What a wonderful committee. And we do have a welcome to campus from Dan. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dan Anhalt. I'm the campus administrator here at UW Sheboygan, and I sincerely want to thank you all for attending this morning and welcome you to the campus. This is a topic that is near and dear to many of our hearts, whether you have family members or friends um, who you have sought assistance and help and worked with as time goes, goes along. So I want to thank you very much for all being here. Um, take time afterwards, if you would like, to walk around the campus. Enjoy the campus. You are about a week away from the halls being filled with students. So this is um, lack of students, but tons of students coming in and finishing registration and getting ready for their fall semester. So again, have a great day today. Enjoy the campus. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. We're happy to be here. So what are we going to do today? And why did we call you here for three hours? Well, we are going to do some education. We are going to do some focus groups, We're going to, so that basically means we want to pick your brain. We're going to do a wrap up, and then we're going to talk about where and how are we going to move forward to make Sheboygan County dementia friendly. So for the first hour or so, we'll be in this room, and we will be doing um, the presentation with a little bit of the education. Then we will be moving two different rooms um, for our focus group. So what we want you to do is keep a couple things in mind. We have different sectors that we'll be breaking out into so you can think about this. If you're healthcare, you'll stay in this room. If you're business, if you're public service, um, or community organizations, you will be in some of the classrooms down the hall, and there is signage, and the different committee folks will be taking those uh, different rooms. But, and if you're with the community or you're a caregiver, start thinking about which group you would like to participate in. So again, what are we here for today? Why are we here? We will give you an overview of, deme of what dementia is, what is dementia friendly in Sheboygan County? How, what are we going to do about it in terms of building a dementia friendly Sheboygan County? What the vision is, again the focus groups, and then what the next steps are. So at this time, I would like to invite Ginny um, to start out with our uh, presentation, and if we could get the lights. <coughs> Okay, so you might recognize this. This is a picture of Sheboygan County. But there are some fun facts I want to share about Sheboygan County. How many of you know that we are on a lake? <laughs> Most of you, right? But did you know that Sheboygan st stands for, in Chippewa Indian language, it stands for Pathway Between the Waters. And did you know that Sheboygan County 
is made up of 513, almost 514 square miles. And you may have known that Sheboygan County is the Bratwurst capital of the world, right? Of the world. That's pretty amazing. But you probably didn't know that Sheboygan County has, besides Lake Michigan, 72 lakes. I didn't know that one. That was really interesting. And Sheboygan County, by surfers around the world, is called the Malibu of the Midwest for the freshwater surfing. And how many of you know this one? Children, chairs, churches, and cheese. Some of you shaking your head. So those are some fun facts about Sheboygan County. Another fact about <laughs> Sheboygan County is we have almost 116,000 people that live in the county. And in the, the state of Wisconsin, we actually have 100, almost 120,000 people living with dementia. So what if all of Sheboygan County had dementia? 119,000 people in the state of Wisconsin do, which is more than the population of Sheboygan County. But we know that those 100 and almost 20,000 people live all over Wisconsin. And although these, these red dots represent those people, there actually should be a lot more red dots in the further northern part of the state because there's the majority of people with dementia are actually living in the northern part of the state for various reasons. <clears throat> so that means in the state of Wisconsin, again, there are more people that have dementia than all of the population of Sheboygan County. So that's nothing, though, if we compare it to what is going to happen or what we're predicting might happen or where we are headed. So due to growth of the older population in the state of Wisconsin, we're actually looking at, in about the next 25 years, at about a 68% increase of people with dementia in the state of Wisconsin. So close to or over 200,000 people. That's if nothing changes. And we talk about what could change to make that not happen. Obviously, a cure would be the one, number one thing or the greatest thing that could happen, um, but also things like how could we slow down the trajectory? So could we put off people developing those symptoms for five or 10 years? Even if we were able to do that, that number would decrease. So why are we here? We know that small changes can make a big difference. And when we're talking about becoming dementia friendly as a county, we're talking about small changes. But those small changes will make a big difference for a lot of people. In fact, in Sheboygan County, we have approximately 2,400 people with dementia. And that's an estimated number because we know there's probably another 50% of that number that is actually not diagnosed and are just living out there. And guess what, folks? Those people aren't living in nursing homes. Those people are living in the community. The majority of people with dementia live in the community. About 20% live in nursing homes, but 80% are living out in the community. <clears throat> So one of those small changes that we want to make is really empowering the community, Sheboygan County, to become dementia friendly. So what I want to do now is just take a couple minutes, and some of you may already have heard this and already know this, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, talk about what is dementia, what is Alzheimer's disease, and what is the difference and what are some other things that are out there when we talk about dementia? So dementia is really a general word. 
We say that it's the actual condition. The condition is dementia. It's an umbrella word. It's a category word. And under that umbrella or category, there are a lot of different types of diseases. In fact, there's over 70 different types of diseases that cause certain symptoms that, that are classified as symptoms of dementia. And dementia symptoms do include loss of memory or cognitive abilities, but it also includes things like changes in thought process and changes in the way we perceive the world and changes in the recognition and changes in mood and personality. So it's more than just a little bit of memory loss. And it has to be severe enough to interfere with the person's daily life. And that's how you get a clinical diagnosis of some type of dementia is you're having that memory loss, you're having those language changes, or you're having those thought process changing, but it has to be severe enough to interfere with your normal daily life. It is not a normal part of aging. And if you leave with nothing else today, remember it's not a normal part of aging. So then what's Alzheimer's disease? Alzheimer's disease, one disease that causes those symptoms of dementia. It is by far the most prevalent. It accounts for about 60 to 80 percent of all the cases of dementia. So it's definitely the most prevalent. It's a progressive degenerative brain disease with a gradual onset, a gradual progression. It is fatal. People do die with Alzheimer's disease. The course of the disease varies from one person to another person. In fact, we have a saying at the Alzheimer's Association, if you met one person with Alzheimer's disease, that means you met one person with Alzheimer's disease. And those of you that are caregivers in the group can tell us that you see differences from one person to another person. And even though we talk about some general characteristics and similarities, it's different because our brains are so complex. <clears throat> So, how does this affect me? Why should I care? Why are all of you here? Um, in your purple folders, there's a one-page handout you were given, and it's facts and figures about Alzheimer's disease. And I want to break that down in the next couple slides and maybe point out some things you didn't know or maybe some things that you did know, or maybe something that might be a surprise to you. So first of all, it's the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Sixth leading cause of death. That is across all ages. If you would just factor in ages 65 and older, it's actually higher than that. But over all ages, it's the sixth leading cause of death. It is the only top 10 disease right now or top 10 causes of death right now in the United States that cannot be prevented, treated, or slowed. And right now in the United States, we have over 5 million people living with Alzheimer's disease. And we project by the year 2050, that number will be more than tripled, if nothing changes. One in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. I had also mentioned that it was the uh, sixth leading cause of death. It also happens to be the only disease at this time where the death rate has increased over the last 10 years. All other diseases, the death rate has decreased. Cancer, heart disease, stroke, even AIDS all of the deaths have increased in the last 10 years. Alzheimer's continues to go up. And we estimate that for every person with dementia, there's probably three family caregivers that are helping to provide support and care for that person. And we also estimate that in 2015, 18.1 billion hours 
of unpaid care were provided by those family members. 18.1 billion. Every 66 seconds, somebody in the United States develops Alzheimer's disease. So we've been here for about 25, 30 minutes already. Every 66 seconds. So figure out how many people is that in the last half hour. About 28 or so, right? And in 1950, or in 19, in 2015, Alzheimer's and other dementias cost the nation $236 billion. Okay, that's what it costs the nation as a whole. So that means it costs each one of us, right? And family caregivers spend over $5,000 a year caring for somebody with Alzheimer's disease. Okay, now for some of us, that might mean missing a vacation, but for many out there, that means missing a meal or missing several meals, going hungry, because they have to pay for that person's care. Medicare costs, in 2016, this year that we're in, we're estimating that Medicare costs for caring for people with dementia will be $706 million. And again, I mentioned that it's the sixth leading cause of death, not only in the, in the United States, but also in Wisconsin, in the state of Wisconsin. In 2013, that is a little bit old because it takes us a while to get those statistics, but in 2013, we had over 1,600 people die from Alzheimer's disease. And let me tell you that there's probably close to twice that many that aren't actually recorded as dying with or from Alzheimer's disease. So, in case you didn't already figure it out, the time to act is now. Dementia affects everybody. It's everybody's business. And that's why we've invited all of you here today. So I'm going to turn it over to Doug, and he'll talk a little bit more about our vision. Because right now I see a lot of energy kind of going down and a lot of faces that are starting to get longer and longer as I'm going through the facts. Well, guess what? We, um, as the task force and all of you, and hopefully more in the community, have a vision, and, and Doug will talk about that a little bit more and how we can be a little bit more positive. See if I can figure all this stuff out here. We did have a video, but the sound did not come through, so we just uh, have to skip that a little bit. And uh, she says, I'm going to try to make it positive. Well, I'm not exactly going to be doing that right away, maybe. But uh, um, we do have a vision as a team, as a committee, and uh, we have a dream. And those are stolen from uh, Martin Luther King's. In his speech, he said, I have a dream. And before he could do that, he first had to recognize a very serious problem. And I think uh, Jenny here has uh, brought that to our attention right away here. Um, uh, King had to help bring that awareness to his community and to the nation. Today we're bringing forward another serious problem in our community and nation. A large group of people are being marginalized, hidden from society, ostracized, and even forgotten. This group uh, does not come from a specific ethnic or racial background. It's not limited to a certain age group. It has nothing to do with uh, income, wealth, or upbringing. At this point right now, some of you right here listening will be suffering from this disease. You see, it often starts like this. I. I go out to eat with my spouse or family, like I've done so many times before. But they begin to notice that I'm a 
a bit confused about some things. I'm having more trouble than usual finding the right, right words. During some of our family restaurant outings, I, I start to get angry. Really kind of, kind of out of control. But the people around me are, are, are just, just doing everything for me. They're, they're, they're treating me like a little, well, just looking at me different. The more, the outbursts become more frequent. I go to the bathroom and I, I don't understand why everybody is looking at me so strangely. Then somebody directs me to a, a different bathroom. I didn't understand. It's the wrong one. I come out of the bathroom and I turn the wrong direction and, and soon I'm in a strange room with people all dressed in white in this restaurant. They're holding knives, the, at pots and pans, there's steam, there's smoke, there's yelling, I'm afraid, I'm scared. What do I do? Where do I go? Finally a face I recognize comes up behind me, a caring, frustrated, and concerned face. What, what did I do wrong now? She takes me by the hand and back to the table. My family is frustrated and as I perceive it, they're angry. They, they start to see that my fear is turning into anger. They're, they're starting to treat me like a child again. I, it's outbursts. They're, they're embarrassed. They decide to leave before the food arrives. Episodes like this start happening more and more often and, and become more intense. My family loves me, but they just don't know what to do. They don't take me out in public in much anymore. I guess that's all right with me because I really don't feel safe out there. I'm just going to go back and hide in my room and my family is just going to help me. They'll, they'll help hide me where it's safe, where they won't get embarrassed. I'm now officially a member of this group that I mentioned earlier that are being marginalized, hidden from society, ostracized, and forgotten. That dementia group. Oops. <laughs> How do we help these people? How do we go about changing things? Well, it's going to take everybody. This is a huge, huge task. And uh, to educate, and that's why we brought you here, is to try and figure out a way to make our communities more friendly, more accessible to, our pe to these people. The vision is for Sheboygan County to become dementia friendly. What is dementia friendly? Well, you know what? You're going to have to help us with that. You're going to have to help us. How can you make your business, your place of employment, your surroundings more friendly? Uh, and, and help us to figure that out together. There are lots of communities that are working on this right now. Yeah, we have a vision. Oops. Caring, memory support. We have a dream to see our community develop a friendship and understanding with these individuals in our community and with their family and the, their caregivers. We have a dream for a community that accepts and makes allowances for who that I am. A community that is safe, which looks out for and cares for individuals with dementia and their family or caregivers. A community where I can venture out again and be a part of we have a dream that when I enter a business, a pleasant, understanding staff sees my needs, walks me to where I need to be, shows me and my caregiver where the family bathroom is. They make me and my family feel comfortable and accepted. A community that might have a slow lane at the checkout counter, 
for, for when I'm fumbling with my wallet and trying to count my money, where the teller offers to help me count the money, and where the people behind me are patient and pleasant. We have a dream for a community where I can travel where I want to go, do the things I want to do, and then get home again safely. When I go to a park or business or other building, I see a symbol that I recognize and reassures me that when I am here, there are people around me that I can trust to help me accomplish what I need and what I want to get done. It's estimated that the diagnosed individuals, as uh, Ginny mentioned, of the ones that are diagnosed, there's approximately 50% more in our community that are undiagnosed, who are hiding at home with a family member or caregiver. That is a large part of our community. It will take a great effort to help them to feel safe, to come out, to patronize our businesses, and contribute to our community. Today we want to examine the community around us. What can you do? What can we all do to become more dementia friendly? I'm going to turn this over to Libby. I'm okay. <laughs> So that was fantastic. Um, so now we're going to break up into the focus groups. And before we do this, I just want to give a little explanation of kind of why we're doing this. So we started working this task force since July of 2015. So it has been a long road to get here. And like Doug mentioned, we've been working on this for a while, but other communities have been working on it for years. So in Wisconsin, um, the Department of Health and Human Services at a state level has been working on this thing called the Healthy Brain Initiative. So they came up with a toolkit called Building a Dementia-Friendly Community. And in this toolkit, they had a list of different things that communities could do to step up to address some of these issues that we've talked about today. So locally, we thought, we really need to get on this. So we went through the toolkit. We brought all these partnerships to the table. We looked at how are we going to address these things. We reached out to other communities that are already working on it to say, hey, what are you doing? What have you done that maybe we could learn from and apply here in Sheboygan County? So one of the biggest things that we found when we did that is that we really had kind of the cookie cutter, you know, the state had made this sheet, other counties had been doing these trainings, but we hadn't heard anything from the individuals in Sheboygan County themselves. So we thought, you know, you could take two approaches to building this great plan. You could either have the mentality of, if you build it, they'll come, or let's have the people on the ground that do work with this every day help us build those blocks and help us in building the plan so that we can really build a plan that addresses those true needs of Sheboygan County. So that's why we're all here today, is we have generic blueprints of all the different steps we can take to become dementia friendly, but we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear from the businesses, the community organizations, the government organizations, the public services, people that work in churches and businesses and parks and restaurants and caregivers and people that live in Sheboygan County every day. We want to hear from you what you think needs to happen in order for this to be a success. So with that, if I could have your attention please, we'd like to get started uh, with our wrap up. Hopefully everyone had a great uh, uh, focus group session. Um, at this time, Dan with UW Sheboygan would like to say something real quickly. Thank you so much. You know how you tell the success of a workshop and conference? After the final break, everyone's still in the room. <laughs> nice work, everyone. That is great. I wanted to ask a favor of you real quick. One of the things we do with the groups as they come in is UW Colleges and UW Extension have started a feedback program called Tap Into It. It lets us know what kind of programming, services, experiences you've had that you've found beneficial. So as you know, um, a number of our organizations have gone through significant restructures and reorganizations. This gives us feedback on experiences that you might have had that you say, hey, this was valuable to us 
as an organization, as a person, or as a, or as a community. So I have some cards up here, and we're literally talking two, three sentences kind of thing. So this is truly falls in the keep it simple category, all right? Um, I won't finish the whole sentence. But I'm going to leave these up here, and if you have an interest, if you've had an experience, whether that's been everything from 4-H to a class you took to a workshop you had here or an experience that you had on campus, and whether it's at this campus or another one, feel free to fill that out. And then you can just, if it's all right with you, Lisa, they can leave them up here on the table, and I'll come back and collect them afterwards. But we do appreciate it. It helps us understand another method by which we can identify what's important to you from a campus standpoint. These campuses are community owned. They're yours. We want to make sure that we keep the programming in place that serves the needs of the Sheboygan community, okay? So thank you very much. And, oh, right up here on this deck. and thank you, Dan, for the use of the facility. Um, very cooperative in terms of getting things set up and, and a great facility. So thank you for that. Great to have everyone here. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Lynn Podian. She is with the Game Board uh, business here in Sheboygan, and she's going to share with us her local perspective of being dementia-friendly as a business. So welcome, Lynn. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so I have it all written down because I didn't want to miss anything because this is kind of an emotional journey for me. So I'm going to direct your eyes up there. Ready? So, since we opened 10 years ago in 2006, it's not moving forward. There it is. All right. We have prided ourselves on not only being dementia friendly, but being inclusive of all abilities. No matter your strengths or weaknesses, you are a part of our community. We go out of our way to make you feel welcome, we give assistance, encouragement, and guidance to everyone. I founded the game board to help my son. Told you it was emotional. <laughs> Who was diagnosed at the age of four with a severe speech delay. Six years later with color blindness. And a year after that with a neurological writing disorder. His brain was an island. And all the bridges that delivered information were broken. Through board and card games, we were able to help him rebuild those pathways, not only redeveloping his, in, his ability to be understood, but increase his social skills and maintain friends as he grew. Eric was four when this journey began, and he's about to begin his sophomore year of college. By making our location accessible to all individuals, we have grown a strong, loyal community. Through the recession, we were never at a loss. Our clients supported and encouraged us as we had them. Our customers come from all over Sheboygan, Sheboygan County, Wisconsin, the U.S., North America, and the world. Because of our commitment to doing the best for you through our ministry, brain health initiative, rental program and store, we have the honor of being awarded 2015 Sheboygan County Retailer of the Year and Sheboygan County Best Game Store 2016. We are proud of all we have accomplished. When asked to be a leader in dementia-friendly Sheboygan County, we were humbled to be a part of the movement. We have always felt that this is the only way to run a business, a community, and a world. Whether we call it dementia-friendly, or all-inclusive, the message is the same. Love your neighbor. So really, the next question is, what's next? What are the follow-up steps? 
And as we mentioned earlier, a lot of this is just in the beginning stages. So a couple of things is we want you to utilize the great resources that are in your folder. Um, we have the self-assessment checklist. That's what this looks like. So this will be a start. So at least you'll leave here with something that you can take back with you. It's double-sided. And for those of you that are a business, an organization, and you're interested in being trained to be dementia friendly, um, we have everybody's contact information when you signed in, but we do want you to stop at the registration desk. Let Chris know that, Chris, wave your hand, that you are interested in receiving that training. And that would be for businesses and organizations. And if you are an individual from the community or a caregiver as well, we can take your information down. And Ginny from the Alzheimer's Association uh, does training all the time for caregivers and, um, and family members. Um, we have an evaluation form that's, as always, right, um, when you go to these type of things that we really want you to fill out. But keep in mind what we'll be doing is we will be gathering all of the information that happened in the focus groups. And again, we should have complete information from everyone here today whether you had an email or an address, and we'll make sure that we're able to share that information because I know a lot of folks that I'm here representing my organization, but I know that there are other people that need to know this information. Um, in addition to that, we will put a link to that video, A Day in a Life, um, that we miss because of the sound issue. But what that'll do is that'll give you an opportunity to kind of um, bring everything back to home base as to where, uh, as to where this is going. Um, in addition to that, I know that a lot of us have a lot of events going on and we don't have time for all of that, but um, Wendy Schmitz with the Senior Activity Center here in Sheboygan has a program going on tomorrow. Um, Wendy, do you want to say a few words about that? Yeah, thank you. Tom brought up in our session um, the information in the documentary Alive Inside. Uh, enough. Uh, Tom brought up in our session that the documentary Alive Inside is um, uh, eye-opening, uh, mind-changing. Uh, we will be showing that at the Senior Activity Center tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and uh, everybody is welcome. And th that's certainly another resource. Um, we thank TV8 and Kerry and his gentlemen today for uh, videotaping this. They'll be editing it, and they'll be putting that out there. Um, as well so that the community learns more about it. Um, as many of you know, the Alzheimer's or the Walk to End Alzheimer's will be Saturday, September 10th, and the new location is Evergreen Park. So keep your eyes and ears open. There is a Facebook page for that, specifically as well as through the Dementia Care Network. And then another interesting um, a uh, program that will be coming up will be Wednesday, October 5th um, at Generations in Plymouth. Uh, working with Generations, Golden Living, and Azura to actually bring the virtual dementia tour um, to Sheboygan County again. I know Wendy had done that at the Senior Activity Center. It was very well received, but it actually gives you an opportunity to put yourself in someone's position is, uh, with dementia. And it definitely is an eye-opener, and I have to tell you it's extremely emotional um, to go through that. Um, and that will be October 5th, and we'll be getting more information out about that. Um, thank you so much. I know it was a... 
uh, educational and information sharing uh, three hours, and that's a huge chunk of your day to day on Monday. So we appreciate you being here. Again, spread the word. Sheboygan County is going to become dementia friendly, and we're really counting on all of you to help us do that. Um, whether it's continuing with the training sessions, with caregivers, whatever that might be. Um, so you can contact me. My business card is in the um, folder as well um, at the Aging and Disability Resource Center. And again, let me remind you, please fill out your evaluation form and just either leave that at your spot, we'll collect them, or at the uh, table when you came in. And uh, again, Dan had some cards up here that he explained earlier. So thank you and have a fabulous Monday afternoon. And um, from our team to you, thank you so much. This is our record. Thank you.